Hey guys, Aaron here back in the garage again for another project. This time we're gonna be changing the clutch on a 1997 base Boxster. It is not my car, uh, it's a friend, Sam, he came over and we got another guy from the area, Mike, who's been a fan of the channel and he came over to watch. So we're gonna split this video into a couple of them, I think. One of them's gonna be removing the transmission, one of them's gonna be doing actually doing the clutch. You guys are watching the video on removing the clutch, so if you need to see how to remove the transmission first, check out this link up here, or there's a link in the description. Thanks again to all my diamond donors for sponsoring the channel. If you guys are interested in that, hit me up. And here we go. All right, Sam is guarding his transmission here. First, what do we got here? Uh, all right. A little dirty, but uh, not terrible here. So next is uh, removing that. Yep, taking the pressure plate off. You have a six millimeter hex. All right. Holding in the pressure plate bolts. Anything special or we just take them all out? You take them all out. You're supposed to not reuse them, but I will be reusing these bolts. <gasps> just uh, FYI. It's gonna be a fun spinning against you kind of uh, thing. Ask it to me. You probably use the uh, power Yeah, line. that's what I was about to. Just zip them out. Probably gonna make it easier for everything. <laughs> Yeah. That's not a sound I want to hear. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get up on the chair for this one. Okay. Let me just spray that out. Because we might have ourselves a little bit of an issue. A little strippage? A little strippage. Hammer? Nope, got it in. Nope. Right. Took a little bit to seat, but. Nope. Mike, you still there? Yep. All right. Mike's still alive. She didn't fall asleep on us. It's been a while. That's possible. It's been a while since we started this. It doesn't take much for me to take a nap. Okay, so we're going to take off the pressure plate now. Does it just pop off? It just pops off. Or has this just been on here for 18 years? Probably 18 years. Let's take a look at the manual. Give it a little bit of smackage. Right. Shouldn't pop right off. Just a little tap, tap, tap right into your home. You missed all his fingers. Yeah. Harder taps. I don't want to mar the flywheel, but uh, I just whack it a little harder. Yeah. There we go. Step there we go. Got ourselves some galvanic corrosion there. Nope, still corroded to the plates. Do you have any one of those wooden uh, spacer things that, to level things up with? Come here. Well, when you got, when uh, you can get up behind here without marring the flywheel. The is. I know you're talking about a, um... Yeah, I'm just thinking if we put it in Door stop enough. thing. Yeah. Yes. Kind of like that. Wedge. 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 Yeah. There we go. Wooden wedge. Yeah, that is possible. Oh, yeah, go under here. On that floor there. Where did I put the pack of them? Probably over here. Come here. Oh, here they are. Perfect. I just thought I'd drive a wedge into things. Get ready to catch it. Well, they just, <laughs> just splintered the wedge. It's not moving. All right, this is not going to be thick enough for the job. 
apparently we just learned that this dust is toxic. So that's fantastic. So uh, gonna go ahead and vacuum this up. The suggested method is to spray this down with some water to make it all soupy and drip so you're not breathing it in. So we're gonna do that next. So do this first. Then all the toxins will drip down on you instead of breathing them. At least you have open-toed shoes on in case it falls on you. That's yeah. right. I did have you guys sign the disclaimer before yeah. you came in here, right? Yes, we did. All right, good. Can you get it from this end of pie? It really doesn't seem like it should be this hard. No. Okay, it's coming. Okay, one o'clock position, it's stuck. Why is it so stuck in one spot? It's got a pin in there. Yeah. Ain't this a bitch? It was a bitch indeed. My car wouldn't be this much trouble. <sighs> yeah, I'm entirely positive that this clutch is about 18 years old. symptoms was it having when you were talking about that? It was just getting hard. Grab this. There's pieces. Surprisingly, uh, it wasn't slipping. Well done, sir. Well, it's okay. Let's put it back to the <laughs> All right, so uh, we're down to the rivet. Right. Uh. You'll have to compare this to the new one. Indeed. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah. we got this versus that. Yeah, there's a couple more, a couple more grooves in here. Yeah, but for 100 and how many? 40,000 miles. Probably went 120 on that clutch. Oh, I like this one better because of the triangles in here. Yeah. See, this Ooh. one's this one's lighter weight. It's got more. Uh, oh yeah. More metal cut out. That makes it faster. That's right. All right, we got an E Torx T55 to get these things off. Go with the breaker bar. I do need to get. No, I just need to get the axle out of the way. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to twist enough to get one, get these bolts lined up. We're going to take a piece of metal. All right, our goal now is to lock the flywheel down so it doesn't rotate. So I have some thick-ish cord that hopefully will be thick enough to hold this thing in place. That appears to be doing the job. 
for now. You will see. All right. Well, the flywheel keeps wanting to move. going to reuse these. Alright, All right. what have we learned about flywheels? That they are heavy as f Light. <laughs> you need a string cutter? I need a string cutter. Coming, coming. <sighs> Alright, you're free. Alright. That rear main actually looks really good. <laughs> Out of the old. Hmm. I've never seen a new one, so I don't uh, know what to compare it to, but it doesn't look terrible. That groove. Yeah. What's the back look like? Yeah. Dirty. Toxic. Source of our toxic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Yeah. It's dirty, but it's not, it's not wet. wet. It's a good sign. Maybe a little. Is that gear at the top for the starter? Or? Yes. Yeah, starter in there. Yeah, anatomy. That's the uh, starter. Got a video on that in case you need to replace your starter. Uh, the dreaded IMS. Dun, dun, dun. So we're not going to do anything with that. Maybe another time. And uh, our rear main seal. So. All right, guys, once you're this far in, you might as well do the RMS. Uh, that seal was super easy to do. I got a video on this. You can check out the link for that. So according to the interwebs, it's okay to clean your flywheel with brake cleaner, but not with carb cleaner. So is that true? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. We're going to clean it with brake cleaner. Is this flywheel glazed? Absolutely. <laughs> Am I still going to use it? Also, yes. Shout out to Steven, who was over here last time working on his car for all of these uh, towels. We're going through them nicely. I'm going to use some really fine sandpaper to take the glaze off of it. Uh, I'm going to do something to the paint on the car to get some scratches out. Basically, because this part is balanced, since it's a dual mass flywheel, uh, that it would be a very expensive mistake if I did in fact mess it up by doing that. All right, we are replacing all the bolts that hold the flywheel on. Here's the part number. I'll try to get a link to these in the description as well. And this is supposed to line up a certain way. It's blind, right? Yeah. What do you have to line up? Something on the back? Yeah, there's just one little hole up here. Flywheel is aligned. Alright, first flywheel bolt. 
You like to come hold here? Yeah, that'd be good. Feels like it's gonna strip. Oh. Or cross thread rather. Well, I'll just take it off, back out, and then put another wing without the yeah. polymer to see how it looks. Okay, I got it. Okay. Sure? No, it's heavy. Okay. Okay, yeah, it's gonna feel like that. Oh, yeah. Tight tolerance. Yeah. Where's this pin on the back? Where's this pin? Here's the hole for the pin right here. Oh, I see. Right there. Pin's up there. Yep. Right here. Ah, I see. Where's the pin now? Pin is right here. It lines up with... About a one o'clock. It's like one o'clock, yeah. It should be right about here. Okay. Perfect. to go in. You need a longer extension on that too. Oh. No, it just dropped. All right. Let's pull her down. Okay. That was a lot of trial and error, getting this thing back up there. Uh, finally, kind of solved it, I guess, is you have to guess where that pin goes in because you can't see it. So you just kind of line it up, stick it on where you think the pin is gonna be, and you're not gonna be able to seat it all the way flush. You're gonna feel it kind of rocking around a little bit still. So I started uh, threading by hand the top one. Um, so if this is the plate in there, that pin is kind of keeping it out like this, so you have to raise the, all right, so from a side profile, that pin on the top is kind of kicking your plate out like this, so you kind of have to pull the bottom out to make it level, and then you can start it in, because if you try to start it when it's like that, it's not gonna work. So with the pin pushing it out, we're gonna get all of them level like this, and then we'll start tightening them in a star pattern, and it'll push it into that little pin. All right, so we're going to start by torquing these things down to 25 newton meters. I'm going to get them all about the same snugness before we start tightening them. All right, so with our handy dandy snap-on torque wrench, we went to 120 degrees after going 25 Newton meters. So this will be the first time I've actually used this, but you're supposed to turn them another 120 degrees. So uh, apparently our torque wrench is gonna keep track of how many degrees it turns. That's 40 degrees. Turning it hard? Yep. <laughs> One fifteen is good enough. Do we need our handy string again? We probably do. All right, let's get our string back up there.
can't take it out or else you'll it'll lose the measurement. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I'm going to be able to torque it. Essentially, as tight as you can get them. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. You gotta let it reset now. Oh, you're right. Here's about eight degrees. Torque this back. Alright, we gotta reset. Uh, triple string knot now. Good. Okay. Alright, you snap on pros. Tell me how to make this reset without having to wait for it. I'm sure there's. Something you can push to hit the enter button. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That one's already torqued. That one's already torqued. Hit enter. That one's already torqued. Hit enter. Torqued. Good enough, good enough, 114. All right, new parts. Okay, these are on the transmission side. These are on the engine side. Gearbox side. Oh, gearbox side. I am. <laughs> I think you still forgot it from the wrong angle. <laughs> Engine, gearbox. Gearbox isn't here, so we can't blame you for not knowing where that is. So, is that the alignment tool? This is the alignment about? tool that we were talking about. All right. Okay. Now we have a pressure plate. All right, if you know what's going on, you gotta, you gotta talk and tell everybody okay, else, because right. I don't know what's going on. All right, <laughs> so we have our alignment tool on. We have our disc against the flywheel. At this point, we're going to put our pressure plate on over the clutch disc. All right. And it's gonna line up with these pins. pins along the edges here and as you can see it doesn't line up with the holes so that's the wrong way so it only lines up one way I assume yes that thing less heavy than the flywheel much <laughs> less heavy than the flywheel Little holes go with the pins, big holes go with the bolts. Now we can start putting our bolts in place. Alright, bolt one. She doesn't understand the value of comic relief. <laughs> Alright, we can put bolt two in now. One over, standing facing the front of the car. One on the right side, one on the bottom. One on the left side. All right, we can go ahead and let go at this point. Just 
being held on by adequate pressure. And I need an apparatus to stand upon. Look at the top one. We have... This is easier standing on a chair or laying on your back? Way easier standing on a chair. <laughs> How much was the uh, clutch and pressure plate, out of curiosity? Uh, around $300 off of Rock Auto. Oh, not too bad. And now we're going to take our six millimeter and tighten it down to snug. snug. <laughs> All right, this thing here is the pilot bearing. It goes in the flywheel. So if you take a socket, apparently you can hammer this thing out, hammer it back in. Our flywheel is already back in the car though. So we're gonna go with the old one. Okay, 17 foot pounds or 23.1 Newton meters. where we're gonna tighten the uh, bolts up to now. All right, as Sam finishes up tightening these uh, last bolts here, just give you a status update. We are about five hours into the process, so it's, uh, it's not too bad. We're going to resume with installing everything tomorrow. All right, last step before we forget and leave it there. Pull the alignment tool out. So yeah, that came with the uh, clutch kit. So they say it is necessary or you won't be able to get that plate back on. All right, got some white lithium grease. Yeah, since I may or may not have forgotten to put a pilot bearing in, <laughs> I'm just gonna do a quick recondition in a bottle. It's just like a new bearing. There we go. All right, we are here. Day two, we are now going to, uh, oh, tell us what we're gonna do. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna take off the clutch fork in order to replace the throw out bearing. Clutch fork, throw out bearing. You should just pry right off. There we go, pops right off. The throw out bearing is just held in the back by two little pry on clips. Oh, that's the old one. <laughs> okay. It's more of our toxic dust. You can hear it's nice and noisy. Ready to be replaced. Yes. What we're going to do now is we're going to clean out the inside of the transmission and grease up the output shaft and the connection point for the clutch fork. All right. All right. Take a stand back. <laughs> First toxic grease of the day. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna let that <laughs> go ahead and dry a little bit. It's the least burning. Literally just pulled it right on off. Yeah, yeah you missed two minutes of work. <laughs> All right. Scrape out the inside of that transmission. So some brushes and steel wool. Don't want to use anything too aggressive. Well, I guess the quality of my other work would suggest uh, yeah. would suggest that I would. Uh, yes. Got to do it the right way. Oh no, we got to do it the easy way. All right, we're just gonna chemically clean that. I don't want to damage the splines. All right, take a step back. Splash them. Splash them. All right. Let everything dry out there, and we'll prep our grease for the splines. This could definitely go on another website. <laughs> okay, so this is the clutch fork. 
Um, as you can see, it just pops on in the back, and you can see how it's oriented by this little indentation. What this indentation does is it's pressed in by the slave cylinder, so it helps you orient the fork after you put your uh, throwout bearing on. Just slide it in, pop it back into place, and the slave cylinder will do its job there. Sleeve cylinder goes in over here. And at this point, we're gonna take our grease that was supplied by the clutch kit. We're going to apply it to the output shaft and surroundings as well as the splines. They don't give you a lot and that's for a good reason because too much can be harmful. Grease up our fork mounting point. All right, everything's good and greased, including my hands. And at this point, we're going to take our throwout bearing. And as you can see on the back of the throwout bearing, there's two little clips that clip into the fork itself. As you can see on your fork, likely, you have two indentations from the previous throwout bearing. And it's just going to pop in place. Just like that. Easy enough. So it's got some travel on there. Yep. Which is good, which is what we want. We're ready to put the uh, throw out bearing and clutch fork back in. Just slides over. Should just press on in. Keyword being should. There we go. And our throw out bearing. Everything's applied. Yeah, so that's how it works. So the slave cylinder pushes on that thing. Yep, the slave cylinder pushes on the clutch fork. Get application on the pressure plate. Pushes the clutch against the flywheel. Hmm, there you have it. It's about five hours yesterday, five hours today, so a total of 10 hours to do this. That includes getting the car in here off the trailer, on the lift, off the lift, back on the trailer, cleaning up the garage. So, so hopefully this helped. If it did, please give the video a thumbs up, guys. Just take one click of a button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys on the next video.